Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, Jeremy Corbyn has received the backing of one of the country's biggest trade union in his, unions sorry, in his fight for the Labour leadership. The Communication Workers Union said he was a leader for the millions, not the millionaires. In a speech to union delegates, Mr Corbyn pledged to ban zero-hours contracts and renationalise the Royal Mail, and he stressed the importance of unity within his party. In opposition, you can achieve quite a lot if you're united in doing so. I am determined that this party will take it to the Tories, will demand a different economic strategy, will protect the living standards and rights of those with disabilities, will invest in housing and will promote a growing economy within our society. Now, we had hoped to hold a television hustings tonight between the Labour leadership candidates, but that hasn't been possible. Hopefully, it will happen later in the summer. But as you can see, the Labour leadership challenger, Owen Smith, has joined us tonight. Good evening. Evening. Do you believe that for Labour to win the next election, you need to win over Tory voters and therefore fight from the centre? Or are there enough people on the left and the, the far left to win a general election? No, we've got to win over Tory voters, people who voted Liberal Democrat, people who voted Green, right across the country. Labour only ever wins if we are able to forge a coalition in the country. We only ever win if we're able to be united in holding together the coalition is the Labour Party itself. And that's why it's so disappointing Jeremy isn't coming on the show to debate with me this evening as he'd promised and as I was expecting. Because I'd like to say to Jeremy, how is he going to unite the party? We've never looked more disunited. And it's never been, I think, more worrying for Labour that we can't go to the country and try and persuade people to vote for us and put their trust in us, because right now they've lost faith and they've lost... I think we've lost respect in the country, and it's, uh, it's pretty desperate... So why do you think it makes sense to be on a platform more to the left of Ed Miliband? Well, I'm on a platform on things that I believe in. I fundamentally believe... But you're, believe you're on the left, aren't you? You're I'm to the totally left. I'm totally on the left. I'm and on... yet you think... You've just told me you need to fight from the centre well, and win over Tory voters. Well, I think you, you are oversimplifying what left and right wants in this country. I think the reality is... People who are middle class, working class, salaried, uh, working you know, week to week, day to day, all want to see public services properly provided for, all want to see the wealthiest in society pay their fair share, all want to see a government that's investing in different parts of the country, not just in the South East uh, and in London. That isn't left or right, that's just good common sense. We've got major problems in Britain and Labour should be speaking for the people and that's not about left or right, it's just about saving country. Well, one of the places you're definitely to the right of Jeremy Corbyn on is immigration, because you've said there are too many immigrants in some parts of the country. What, what, what are you going to do about it? Well, first of all, that's, an, again, a simplification of what I've said. I'm not going to do what others have done in this country, which is bandy around racist language or intolerant language about immigration, but we've got to be honest with the country, which is a lot of people who voted in particular to leave at the European uh, referendum did so because they were worried about pressure on schools and hospitals and doctors' surgeries, and they attributed that to immigration. So what are and you going to do about that? Can, well, invest is the principle. So it's thing. improve the schools and hospitals, Absolutely not right. cut the immigrants? Absolutely right. The pr principal thing we in Labour should be doing is putting together what I call a British New Deal. We've spent a lot of time and effort and money, we may do again this week, floating the bankers in Britain. It's time we started floating people and communities, and that means borrowing. £200 billion worth of borrowing I advocate in order to invest... But, but just on the number of immigrants, before we get to the public services, I mean, are you saying we don't need to cut the number of immigrants coming into Britain? Well, I'm saying in certain parts of the country, it's been a massive benefit for us to have high immigration. And in other parts of the country, it's definitely led to some so do pressure you want to cut them on not? wages. Well, I'm saying we need an honest conversation with people. Well, have an honest conversation well, with me, then. Do you want to cut them or not? I'm having one. I'm saying in certain parts of the country, it's been a benefit. In other parts, it's so been a So do you want, in, in the parts where there are too many, I would, be, I would, would be you going, like to cut I would them? be going into the European Union negotiations right now, arguing for what I think the British people wanted, which is, yes, a greater measure of control over migration, plus the benefits of being... Uh, a trading partner within the European Union. It isn't a binary choice. It's changing, I think, in lots of European What markets. about freedom of movement, then? Well, that's what I'm saying does need to be on the table. We need to be arguing powerfully across Europe that we need 
both our cake and to... So you're like David Cameron. You want to be in Europe because you want to campaign for Britain to, to reject Brexit in a second referendum, but you, you think we should, you know, do something about freedom of movement? I'm saying that we should be asking for the Labour Party that argued, I think, for us to be in the European Union, now that we're leaving the European Union, to be strong and in favour of our principles, standing up still for staying But you want to resist Europe. it, don't you? You no, want no, to resist I leaving absolutely want to the resist. European I Union. I absolutely want to resist. I think it was a major mistake by Jeremy. You want Jeremy. to overturn us, in fact, don't you? No, I think it was a major mistake by Jeremy to come out on the following day and say, let's trigger Article 50 straight away. I think it reveals his ambivalence about you. But do well, you I, want I'm to overturn it at a second referendum? I would like Britain to remain within the European Union. I would like that to be the Labour Party's position. But in order to get to the point where we can ask the British people once more to rubber stamp the deal, either at a general election or at a second referendum, we need, first of all, to negotiate toughly in Europe. And that well, except you mean... can't negotiate in opposition, yes. can you? Well, so, so would, would no, you no, be no, the party we, we of the 48% or not? No, no, we should be arguing, Krishnan, that the Labour Party, that has 9 million people who voted for it at this last election, and where 67% of those people voted to stay within the European Union, we should be arguing that Labour has a mandate and a right to sit alongside the Tories and negotiate. This is much bigger than party politics. So the thing Jeremy didn't understand, I think, in arguing in Brexit. This has got the biggest consequences for this generation and subsequent generations of any political decision. It's bigger than any yeah. general election, it's bigger than okay. any party. So Labour should be arguing really toughly at European levels that we want to both have our cake and eat it. Let's talk about whether you're ready for leadership, because you've had a couple of sort of rocky moments. You've said things that came out wrong, certainly. What, what were you thinking when you said you'd like to smash Theresa May back on her heels? I was, think, I was thinking that the Labour Party's been a weak opposition in recent years, and we've sat by whilst the Tories have privatised the NHS effectively, we've sat by while they've destroyed great institutions like Sure Start. But austerity that's violent been, language, isn't austerity it? I mean, is, well, I, I have apologised for it, because I think it was... Uh, but where bit, did it come bit, from, the idea well, of smashing... Well, a I woman think, politician back on well, her heels. Well, that's not quite what I was saying, because if you've seen well, the speech... What you said. If you've seen the speech, what I was talking about was smashing back Tory ideology, Tory ideas. It obviously wasn't intended uh, to be referring to Mrs May in person. I'd never have dreamed... But of people are wondering whether, whether, whether you're a bit unsound on, on gender, because you also suggested to Leanne Wood that she got more TV exposure because, she, because of her gender. Well, again, that's a misreading what actually happened. We were... Uh, debating, we were debating our relative... You said she gets on more because on of her gender. Look, and she wasn't offended by it, and we were talking in a much more general sense. And obviously, my opponents, some of the people who are supporting Jeremy Corbyn, some of the people in the right-wing press in this country, will seek to blow out of all proportion anything that I say. I'm expecting that, Christian. This is a leadership contest. The stakes are incredibly high. But that's why I'm coming out, speaking to you today, making my pitch. I'll be doing it right across the country. I think Jeremy needs to do the same. The this trouble is, is people really are still trying to work out what, what you really are, because right now you say you're on the left and you've been a very pro-Corbyn member of the Shadow Cabinet when you were there. Um, you were a great supporter of Ed Miliband and you were a great supporter of Tony Blair. You were asked in 2006 whether there was anything other than the Iraq war you disagreed with him on, and you said, no, there wasn't. So are you a Blairite, a Milibandite or a Corbynista? Uh, I'm none of those. I'm a Smithite, very, very clear. And if I had somebody whom I uh, hold up as being my great hero, it's none of those. It's Nye Bevan, somebody who is, I think, a very practical socialist who came from a very traditional left but sensible perspective. But your politics have shifted, haven't they? Because no, you used no, to be pro PFI. No, again, well, again, you used to be no, no. quite, you know, quite, quite um, sure open-minded to private gotta, involvement in the, in the NHS. No, no, that's not true. You've got to stop believing what you've read oh, on got the quotes, social yeah. media. Well. You are extrapolating from one um, uh, report that was commissioned by my predecessor in an old job I had, which was about there being greater choice in the NHS, which was the language, of course... You said we've had PFI in Wales, government. we had a hospital built down in Baglan through PFI. If PFI works, then let's do it. I'm not someone who gets terribly wound up about some sort of ideological nuances. And I subsequently feel that PFI left lots of parts of the country, local authorities and health boards, saddled with debt. And that's clearly true. And I subsequently feel that the decisions that the Len Labour government took to try and do effectively off-the-book development of schools and hospitals, public services, was a mistake, which is why I'm arguing what we should be doing now is borrowing. 
two hundred billion pounds worth of borrowing by the government in order to directly okay. invest in these things. Learn the mistakes of the past. If you lose, can you rule out joining any kind of breakaway Labour group in Parliament? This is what's being talked about yes. now, is that a load of people yes. will, will set up a real Labour or a provisional Labour. There's no circumstances under which you would be involved in any kind of split. Listen, I am... And do you condemn the people who are talking about it? Yes, I do. I am Labour full stop. It is the Labour Party or nothing for me. There is no other vehicle that is going to come along. We have been the party for 116 years that has represented working people, my community and across Britain, and it will always be the Labour Party that does that. The people who are talking about a split, unfortunately, are the hard left of the party. It was John McDonnell who looked me in the eye when I went to meet with Jeremy Corbyn, and when I said, John, I think you're uh, sanguine about the prospect of the party splitting, his explicit response was, if that's what it takes. Now, that is when I decided to stand for this job, because I will not stand by and see the great Labour Party that I love broken apart oh, by John MacDonald or anybody else. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks a lot. I hope to see you again at a debate. Well, it's hard not to view the goings-on in the Labour Party this summer without thinking that this is more than a fleeting domestic row. How on earth does it end? Can it carry on into next summer too? Well, it's been said that the two wings of the party are like a couple who want a divorce but can't bring themselves to separate because neither can afford to move out. Publicly, of course, no one in Labour yet wants to talk about a split, but it turns out there have been conversations about what could happen if Mr Corbyn wins again, what the implications might be of MPs detaching themselves from the leader, for example. Is this a solution or an aggravation of Labour's problem? Well, our political editor, Nick Watt, has been looking at the rebel MP's options. Do, 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 down, do, be, do, down, down. It's hardly a summer of love in the Labour Party. Jeremy Corbyn has lost the confidence of his MPs, but this evening thousands of supporters turned out for him in Liverpool. His challenger for the leadership, Owen Smith, is putting up a fight, but thoughts amongst Labour MPs are turning to life under a rejuvenated Jeremy Corbyn. Four scenarios are being assessed. A full split is being discussed on the fringes of the party, but the two historic schisms in the Labour Party involving Ramsay MacDonald in 1931 and the creation of the SDP in 1981 have left a painful legacy for today's generation of MPs. So for the moment, a full split is seen as a step too far. There's clearly unhappiness with Jeremy and his leadership People are worried about the 2020 general election, but I don't see any inclination for a split. I don't see colleagues talking about it. I don't hear colleagues that I'm meeting talking about it. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's more of a media fixation. With a full split looking unlikely, some Labour MPs are exploring other avenues. In recent months, some of Jeremy Corbyn's Labour opponents have been dusting down the parliamentary rule books to see whether they could be designated as Her Majesty's loyal opposition if they can command greater support at Westminster. Newsnight understands that both sides from Labour's ongoing war have been in touch with parliamentary officials to see whether this is a realistic prospect. The rules, it would appear, are somewhat opaque. If a large breakaway group of Labour MPs wanted to go to the Speaker and claim to be the opposition without actually breaking away officially from the Labour Party, that could place the Speaker in quite a difficult position that in effect he'd be making a judgement as to whether the Labour Party continued in its current form. In the shadows, some Labour figures are looking at clipping Jeremy Corbyn's wings by reviving the tradition of holding elections to the shadow cabinet. Labour MPs who are overwhelmingly opposed to him would have the first say on changing the rules. If they were voting in shadow cabinet elections, I imagine they would choose a slate of members who they saw as more moderate, who were not Corbynites, which would mean that you had a party leader um, who was perhaps from one faction of the party and a shadow cabinet which represented an alternative point of view. Um, it's hard to see that they would be electing many Corbynites to support him, so that would change things very fundamentally, I think. But reviving shadow cabinet elections would involve changing party rules, which would have to be approved by the ruling National Executive Committee and by the Labour Party conference. In the end, the most likely outcome may well be a continuing standoff between Labour's opposing factions. 
Newsnight has spoken to senior figures opposed to Jeremy Corbyn, who say their best hope is for Theresa May to go back on her word and call an early general election to gain a mandate for the EU renegotiations. Who'd have thought that Labour MPs would look to a Tory Prime Minister to beat their leader for them? Breaking up is hard to do. Well, Nick is uh, with me now. I mean, Nick, just, let's just focus on those conversations with the Speaker's office, with parliamentary experts about what happens if the MPs break away. I mean, have they really concluded that can't work? Yes, I mean, it's interesting that the distrust is so great that the various factions, the two factions, have been holding separate informal meetings, scurrying off to the Speaker's office and indeed to the Clerk's office. And what this shows you about the Corbyn camp is that they are so worried about their control of the party, they're saying, could this really happen? And the message they're getting back is it's a matter entirely in the hands of the Speaker. And the anti-Corbyn people are saying, you know, can we really pull this off because they're so determined to marginalise Jeremy Corbyn? And what I think it appears is that the rules are mixed, but I think it comes down on the side of he or she who holds the title deeds of the Labour Party, which is going to be Jeremy Corbyn. And I think that explains why we are sort of moving away from splits and breakaways. Right. I mean, look, there were 75% of the MPs, three-quarters of the MPs said they didn't have confidence in Jeremy Corbyn. How many of them are serious enough to up the ante as opposed to, like, we don't have confidence in him, but if the, public, if the, if the party want him, we'll, we'll, we'll stick by him? I mean, how many are serious opponents as opposed to dilettante opponents of Corbyn? Well, I mean, as you're saying, that 80% figure looks great on paper, but one of Jeremy Corbyn's most ardent opponents told me that they think it is a flimsy figure. And let me tell you exactly what this person said. 60 who said they had no confidence in Corbyn will suddenly rediscover their confidence if he's elected leader. So you will therefore have a functioning front bench. 30 will just sort of hunker down and be sort of diligent MPs. There may then be a core group hostile. Do you remember that was that phrase in that Great. internal <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn office uh, group? And then this person said, as for us, we will be progressively picked off with deselections. Right. I mean, this is why, in the end, you came to this option of just continuing standoff as, as, as where it all might, might go. What, what, in effect, does that mean? I mean, it, perhaps it means a Tory government. I don't know, another Tory government. But what can it mean that you just have a disagreement between the leader of party and the vast bulk of his or her own MP? Well, I think it might see, mean that we see our favourite verb coming back, which is unresignation. So some of those front benchers who resigned in the so-called coup will unresign and will go back on the front bench. But quite difficult for senior people to do that, because obviously we will just be able to play back what they said on these programmes on others. So that's the first thing that will happen. I think the second thing will happen is this so-called shadow, shadow cabinet. I think it's a bit difficult to revive the rules on elections to the shadow cabinet. So you might have what's being described as a sort of a parallel opposition where senior figures will just stand up, say their own thing, lots of pamphlets, not exactly stand by the whip. But some of those most ardent sort of opponents of Jeremy Corbyn are saying weirdly that their best hope is in Theresa May finding herself having to go back on her word and call a general election if she runs into difficulties over an EU mandate because what they're saying is Jeremy Corbyn would struggle uh, to do well there and then hopefully that be their chance. But by then, you may have a very different Labour Party and many, many more MPs from the left. Nick, thank you very much indeed.